Hello, tonight we're going to talk about student remediation. Reading me, remediation is like a road map. It can be the guide that we use on helping students from the moment that we start noticing potential issues um, and guiding them through the process using this roadmap to enhance their learning and student experience and promote reten retention and, and hopefully increase their motivation. So typically research has found that um, concerns for students that are having issues with their academic coursework often happens through faculty referrals. If this, it typically happens later on in the course, uh, in the coursework, sometimes even during the clinical field stage, rather than when the behaviors are first noticed. So although um, remediation can happen at any time, um, it's, it is commonly um, at the end of the phase of their um, program where they're in their field work. So it is very important to be able to identify issues or concerns that could, that, um, could possibly um, point to issues with the, with the competency of the student becoming a counselor. And we, wanna, we want to address it early on and able to be effective um, and to, to actually identify what the problem is. So what is student remediation? The Counseling Graduate Student Remediation Questionnaire defines remediation as a documented procedural process that addresses observed inabilities in students' performance with the intent to provide students with specific means to remedy their inabilities. So let's talk about that a little bit more. What does that all mean? So it is part of our ethical code and also the standards to provide remediation efforts to students that may be struggling. The Council for Accreditation of Counseling and Related Educational Programs, KCREP, notes that program edu counselor education program faculty have a process where we systematically assess each student's each student for their assessment regarding retention, remediation, and dismissal. This assessment process includes identifying key professional dis dispositions. What that means is we want to be able to assess the professional attitude, um, the values, beliefs of the counselor and training student. And often we assess that, well, we assess the, this, these dispositions um, through verbal and the nonverbal communication of the student. The measurement of these professional dispositions is expected to happen over periods of time, different points of time in the while the student is in the counseling program from beginning to end throughout the entire process. And we are to review and analyze the information that we gather through these assessments. The American Counseling Code of Ethics identify the reasons why it is in our ethical code to um, address remediation and offer remediation to students. Overall, the, the, the biggest thing here is that we do no harm. Client welfare is of the utmost importance in, when we are um, in the counseling relationship. And of course, the welfare of the student is critical as well. We need to protect and promote the student welfare. And as such, as prof professionals, we need to, uh, uh, counselor educators, supervisors, we need to adhere to that code of ethics.
The code of ethics um, states that we need to um, provide evaluation, remediation as appropriate, also identifies the limitations of, of remediation and also counseling for students. So through ongoing feedback regarding the student's report, uh, performance, uh, throughout the entire program, there are scheduled um, assessment evaluations that we do with the student. Remediation it, it, it happens, it, it can happen initially and through the ongoing um, evaluation process. The, the, the student um, needs to be aware, the count, as the counselor, educator, supervisor, it is our responsibility, our ethical responsibility to inform the student of the expectations before um, we even begin this um, relationship and that that they and advise them of their, um, their their right to for remedial assistance if appropriate. Remedi remediation can be um, uh, include Sorry about that. Um, had an issue with my computer there. So re remediation um, happens when the student is unable to demonstrate that they can provide competent counseling services to a diverse um, range of clients. And as supervisors, we, we seek consultation, we document um, our, uh, our decisions and the reme remediation efforts with the student. So this, the, as the, the educators, it is important that we let the students know clearly before the program starts throughout the entire program, the levels of competency that is expected, how these competencies will be evaluated and, and measured, and when they will be happening, um, both in, in, in the one, when the assessment will happen on, on the one-on-one -on -one supervision and even in the, even the clinical competencies as well. You are expected to, or we are expected to as counselor educators, when it comes to securing um, remedial assistance, we seek um, professional consultation and um, also document that whether we are going to dismiss the student or refer the student for remedial assistance. And then we ensure that the students have recourse in a timely manner to address decisions requiring them to seek assistance or to dismiss them um, according to the policies of our university and, and its procedures. This is from the, the, the Code of Ethics. So basically what we're talking about here is fairness. Um, the, the student has a right to due process. Um, we want to adhere to that and we want to, um, to, to do the right thing in our remediation efforts, again, because we're promoting student welfare and it is our ethical responsibility. As we realize that there are limitations in some students in achieving um, the competency to become effective counselors, um, the things that I just listed regarding, um, you know, getting, um, looking into securing a remediation assistance for the for the um, student, getting consultation, documenting what is happening, and also allowing the, the student to process addresses those limitations. So if students request counseling, um, or if the counseling is, is recommended for remediation, um, the, the educator is to help the student be able to um, be linked with um, appropriate counseling services. We're going to be talking about remediation intervention specifically in just a minute.
what can we do? So we want to create interventions that are tailored to meet the specific needs of the student, just as we would create a treatment plan in a counseling session that is um, specific and client centered, we want to do the same for the student. The open door policy, colleges are becoming, are, are enrolling a greater number of diverse students, which is wonderful. These students are, um, are, are of all different types of groups and backgrounds um, of different cultures. And as such though, because of these differences, there may be um, remedial issues that, that arise. As in, in order to reduce attrition, to increase motivation and, and success, it is important to um, be um, proactive as, as, as educators and be able in, in promoting retention. It is important to have procedural fairness, to remain fair when implementing a remediation plan. We want to provide the student with the opportunity to be fully engaged in the remediation plan and the process. And we also want to um, take into an into account the cultural factors, the cultural background of the student. It is important also to balance the program's responsibility to protect the welfare of the public and the clients um, that we are, are committed to serve. I wanted to talk a little bit about old school remediation efforts that that we that we see and that are not wrong, um, but aren't necessarily student-centered or um, uh, tailored to the, the student's needs. We want where often the old, these, these uh, old school, uh, old school, that's my own term, interventions are, can be seen as, as punitive. So let's talk about that a little bit. Personal therapy as a remediation intervention um, has had uh, some criticism. And, and it's, this is mostly because of the lack of guidelines on how to handle the confidentiality um, of the, the counseling session and the lack of research in its uh, effectiveness as a remedial um, inter intervention and also um, the conflict of interest that um, that happens because of uh, the um, personal therapy and and the agreement that um, that this is a, a remediation program and the re and and will need to be reported the the outcomes I guess of, of personal therapy will need to be reported to the program. Um, other remediation efforts is, you know, increase faculty contact, increase supervision, repeating courses, being removed for your from your clinical work, additional assignments, um, extra courses, leave of absence, and workshops. So a great deal of more of work, um, more scrutiny, and you can see how this could be more impunitive in, in nature. We're going to now. I want to discuss a little bit of the the new avenues for remediation that we're seeing. So, in general, the the success can happen with a student when the faculty has a genuine interest in the the student's welfare and success, conveying a positive tone. Um, the remediation plan is very detailed. Um, the, the client's uh, evaluations were very detailed and observed, in, in observed performance deficits. It has been very, very, made very clear throughout the, the client's um, academic career in the counseling program um, 
what has been going on with the performance in regards to its assessments. It's focused on observed behaviors, what we know is happening, and not, the, not necessarily just the interpretation of the behaviors. The remediation plan is customized specifically to that individual student. Um, the remedial goals are identified just like as in a counseling session, a, a client's um, treatment plan. The goals are very clear and the remediation plan is the guide on how to meet those goals. The linked goals are, the goals are linked to the evaluate, the, the criteria that will be evaluated and assessed. Um, the specific steps, the objectives to achieve the goals are very clear. There is a, a timeline. Um, this is all documented and signed by um, all the parties, the student and the faculty and the program administrators. What does it look like? So what we want to see in remediation, again, is that um, it has a spirit of remediation, a spirit of recognize, reconciliation of issues and, and correcting things. And again, um, this the, the remediation efforts, we want to be fair. We want to offer the student due process. I wanted to talk a little bit uh, on a case study that Dalherty et al. had shared um, in their um, in their article. So we have Elaine, who is a second year student in a master's level counseling program. Um, she has a full plate, as we can all uh, understand and relate. She works till five, supervision is at five. So Elaine thinks, no big deal, I will get there as soon as I can, but as such, she is late. Elaine is surprised when she receives an unsatisfactory for her supervision um, at, at the end of that, pro, that course. What is the problem here? The problem is the communication between the faculty member and the student. Had there been clear communication of the expectations and the best practices of these expectations is putting it in writing such as a, a syllabus, syllabus and not just a verbal um, a verbal contract. These, this needs to be written down. It needs to be informative and um, had this all been co clearly communicated in the beginning, this problem probably might not have have happened. Um, although the, the tardiness um, is unprofessional of the student, the, the faculty member had an obligation to communicate this very clearly um, at the beginning of supervision and throughout that it is a consequence and a potential, con the potential consequence could be the requirements of, super, of, of the supervision are not met. So this ex could be an example of, a, a, of uh, having those clear expectations, informed consent to the student, writing this all down, documenting, signing it is a proactive approach to student development. The, the, the case of, um, of what initially happened of her being late and um, the supervision getting unsatisfactory uh, is reactive. It was reactive. It, it, they responded to the behavior instead of addressing things at the very beginning to prevent, um, prevent this. Thank you all for your time. Um, I enjoyed um, presenting to you. Uh, have a, I hope you have a little grace and mercy as I fumbled my way through this. Uh, thank you so much.